Tom Messick was a veteran for the U.S. Army. He was a paratrooper for the 82nd Airborne Division. He also was a very experienced outdoorsman, having taught hunting and survival training classes for multiple years. Messick was getting up in age, being 82, and had a history of heart problems, as well as losing an eye in the early 20s due to an accident with an explosive device. Because of this, he had poor vision, restricted hearing, and 159 stitches in his hand. He almost decided not to go on the annual hunting trip because he had just gotten over a case of the shingles. Unfortunately, deciding not to go on that trip would have been the best thing for him. Messick went out with a group of friends and family, hunting near Lily Pond. The older members of the group, including Messick, were spread out about 60 to 100 yards in almost a vertical line, while the younger group pushed deer toward them. Messick was supposed to stay in that spot and wait, but when the others showed up to where he was supposed to be at, he was gone with no trace of him or his belongings. He was carrying a rifle and walkie-talkie, as well as wearing gloves, duck boots, camouflage pants, a coat, and a red and black checkered hat that he had worn for decades. His friends searched for him starting at 4.30 p.m. and called the park rangers. It had gotten dark around 7 p.m. and half of the group stuck around to honk their car horns and shoot their rifles in the air to try and attract Tom to the area. While the other half of the group went to report him missing to the authorities and family members. On November 16th, the official search had begun with 13 trained search and rescue professionals from the Park Service. It had started quickly, following the time that Tom went missing and was well organized from the start. The search continued to over several weeks, including over 300 trained professionals and volunteers on some days, assisted by divers, dogs, and several helicopters, finding no clues with no sign of even his rifle. Over four square miles were searched with a larger area being covered by air with the aid of a helicopter from the State Police Aviation Unit. Over 15 agencies were involved in the search, including DEC police officers, DEC police canine units, DEC forest rangers, a FBI quick response team, a state police special operations response team, the Warren County Sheriff's Office tactical team, and volunteers from the New York Federation of Search and Rescue teams. Like many other missing 411 cases, the weather was bad with heavy rain, but sniffer dogs were deployed before the worst of the rain started. The searchers were very determined, walking through the woods, no matter how thick they were, checking nearby roads and swamps, but there was nothing. To allow a detailed search of every grid zone, areas had been tied off with string. It had been described as a spider's web of string in the forest. Being 82, the searchers were puzzled that they couldn't find him or any clues as he couldn't have gotten far from his original location. Even stranger, some said it was weird that there were no sounds of wildlife, and while they were searching, they saw no wildlife at all. The search area has many crevices, caves, and other hazards. On the fourth day, November 19th, the FBI arrived. This was unexpected because the FBI never gets involved in these type of searches, but seems to happen more frequently in the missing 411 cases. Investigators of the case said there had been no clues to point to foul play. A spokesman for the DEC David Winchell said rangers continued to search the area on a limited, continuous basis since the wide-scale ground search ended in January 2016. This means the rangers still periodically check the area for any evidence or clues. Also, the investigation of Tom's odd disappearance is still an active missing persons case by authorities. Tom had a wife named Beverly, and she said, quote, the FBI told me something isn't right with his case, but they don't know what. They won't share any theories if they have them. The FBI said until they make a discovery, they're never going to know. Quote, he'd been in the woods since he was a boy, and if he got lost, he would have cut a piece off his jacket and tied it to a tree, 
and done the other things he learned, unquote, his wife said. Her greatest fear was that he was the victim of foul play. Quote, the only thing I can think of is that maybe someone came by in a quad, hurt him, got scared, and drove him out of there. I keep praying they'll find him so we have some closure. I keep worrying that I didn't tell him I loved him on the last day I saw him alive. Unquote. The summer of 2018, the state police brought in sniffer dogs trained in detecting cadavers to go through portions of the woods and fields near where Messick disappeared. John D. A., the state police investigator, said no clues were found, but the investigation was still ongoing. In the movie Missing 411, one of the hunters in the group was interviewed. Quote, I heard a strange noise in the woods, but I didn't know what it was, just a different noise from what I usually hear, you know? Like what? It'd be hard to explain because, it, well, but it was different, something different that I never heard before in the woods. I just can't say what it was, you know? How long in duration was it? Was it two or three seconds? No, it just, whatever it is, you know? How far away was it? I'd say it was probably 150 yards, something like that. Was it toward Tom or away from Tom? This was up towards the hill, the top of the hill, yeah. Did you tell the cops this? Yeah, I told them that, but they just passed it off, you know? Tom Messick is another one of those very strange disappearances in the woods. He might have been old, but he was very experienced in the outdoors having taught classes on survival. He had his rifle and walkie-talkie with him, but they were never recovered, even with the water and caves being searched as well. Their search was so large that locals thought a politician was missing. Sniffer dogs couldn't find a scent, and helicopters with forward-looking infrared cameras pulled up nothing. With the FBI being involved and saying to his wife that something was not right about the case, to the hunter that was interviewed and said he had heard a strange noise in the woods is all very strange and scary. Did he run into a serial killer or something else that took him? We may never know. It's like he just dropped off the face of the planet. Like I said before, the investigation is still ongoing. So if you have any important information, please contact the numbers on the screen. Hopefully the wife will get closure to what happened to her husband.